Let me uh, ask you a question. Who is Barry Satoro? I don't know who Barry Satoro is. You don't know who Barry Satoro is. Barry Satoro? No. He's the most powerful man in the world. Is he really? Really? Well, okay, dude, I just learned something new. I, yeah. Barry Satoro, a.k.a. Barack Hussein Obama. Oh, my God, really? Is, is, is that really his name? Yeah, well, you know, here's the, you know we're never going to get the real information about this guy. Really? This guy is, this guy, never, this guy oh is a fraud. I wow. mean, can you imagine that this guy has become president of the United States? Where is it documented that his real name's Barry Satoro? Yeah. I never heard of that. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Do people do people know anything about this guy? It's when he moved. Get this. I I, I sent wow. you a link to it. I think, but that's why. <laughs> so, this guy this guy oh, went shit. to. I think he was uh, six years old when his mother moved him to Indonesia, and she married some Indonesian guy. Right, right, right. Okay, and he changed his name to Barry Satoro there because the new father's last name was Satoro, so they called oh, him Barry. Okay, now, okay. that's where he supposed. You know, did you know that uh, Barack Obama, Barry Satoro, also has said that one of his favorite sounds, one of the sweetest sounds he's ever heard, is the call for prayer. The call for prayer. You know what the call for prayer is? Yeah, is in the Muslim religion. Yeah, it's when they, it's when you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you hear, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that and they sound like a special horn or whatever. They pray three times a day. The Muslims. Oh, and it's it does, and it's different every. It changes. It changes with the time of the year. It's not the same time every day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, I mean, the dude's a Muslim. We we know this, right? Well, we don't. In this, I mean, well, his act, well, we don't know for sure. But put it this way: his actions at best are precarious, right? Because, you know, take the ISIS incident for example. Okay, this I I said to you by the way two months ago, and, and you may recall um, that this is a holy war. This is absolutely a holy war. What what are these, you talking these, about? A holy war? These, these ISIS clowns are hardcore Muslims. Okay. And if you read any part of the Quran, this is what popular sources don't tell you. The Quran has verses in it called Thuraz, S-U-R-A-H, I believe, called a Surah. It's, it's uh, analogous to a verse in the Bible. But the big difference is nowhere in the Bible does it say um, to, at all costs, convert a Gentile, okay? Uh, or, or if they don't convert, kill them. Whereas, I hate to say it, in their religion or faith system, okay, what I'm going to say isn't popular, but it's the truth, and the regular media doesn't report it. Okay, you could go, you could use, basically, these guys, ISIS, they're basically similar to the Moors of the 8th century that conquered most of Southern Europe, including Spain, okay, and basically said that, look, Dave or Dan, if you don't convert to Allah and convert to be a Muslim, I'm going to kill you. That's your choice. Either convert or we'll kill you. So the Christians that were whacked about a month ago, those 26 guys, they were given the option yes, to convert. I know. Yes, I know. And they said no. Yes, I know. And but they were killed. But here's, here's, the tra here's the tragedy behind all this. They were killed. Here's the it, it's a, it is a tragedy. I no, agree. No, no. But, no, the tragedy is, is that these guys would be playing in a sandbox if the United States government with the CIA did not fund these people. We created these people to become our monster, and then we're like, oh my God, how did the monster get off the leash? Yeah, I hear you there. I, I, I understand. I agree. I don't, I don't disagree. Okay, no, it started, policies... it started. Do you know that the Carter administration through this, is, this goes know. to the heart of the whole issue. Those mm -hmm. people radicalized those fanatical Muslims back in Afghanistan by bringing Osama bin Laden and the other jerks into the country. Yeah, but Dave, 
you, I hear you, but here, here's finish? the thing. Honestly, you got to go back in history. you got to go back like 2,000 years ago. Dan, let me finish this, please. Okay. Okay, right. 2,000 years ago, who cares? Okay. It I goes was, back further than what you're am, saying. That's the point. No, it's, it's not. not the, no, the point is. It was way before the Carter administration. Way before. It doesn't <laughs> matter. The point. It, does it matter. doesn't matter That's to the point. That's why we radicalize them. That's my point. The Moors were doing this in the eighth century. They were killing people. Let me rephrase. That's why the Spanish... Let me rephrase it. We financed these fuckers to fight our that... war, and then we're like, "Holy, shit. how did they get into power? Holy, shit. how the hell? How the hell?" How the hell did they start killing these people? Yeah, I get Why? That. I get because that. let me ask you a question. If they had freaking uh, swords and rifles that were 100 years old and they went into a village, they would have a lot less effect than they are now. So, right. so we're to blame for this. Dude... <laughs> I, I, I don't disagree. I and mean, they look. did it because now now they can go out and say, hey, we need more weapons, we need more troops, we need more of this. It's all, it's all one big racket. Dude, you're pretty, dude, I totally agree with that. Like, like you said, you keep throwing the Smedley Butler. I, I, I agree, all right? I, I ran into that article four years ago, five years yep. ago. I totally agree. Yep. And when someone at his level, uh, who was, a, you know, a hardcore Marine that saw numerous combat, or however you want to put it, is saying that, that bodes with me. A guy that's been there, a colonel in the you United States You know what States I did Marine today? Corps. Yeah, you know what I okay. did today? Uh, I, I, saw, I saw a post, a posting on, online from the, the general who's in charge of NATO. Oh, yeah? Okay. So uh, I basically asked him to research Smedley Butler in case he didn't know who he was. Really? Yep. And I said to him, and I hope you will have the courage to do what needs to be done instead of following these politicians. Right. Because let's face it, I mean, if you, if you, want, to talk, if you want to use Smedley Butler as an example, look at, it's been 80 years since he wrote that book. It's Nobody been, even knows who this dude is. Most it's been, people. That's the sad and it's thing. Been, and it's been over 80 years since Prescott Bush and his group tried to overthrow the United States government with Smedley Butler. And Smedley right. Butler had the intestinal fortitude to, uh, to do to the right thing. And, not yeah. and since that guy, have we had anybody in the military where you can say they're not going to be a political hack and they're not going to just follow orders and do what they think needs to be done. Like this guy in NATO, he's like, we got we to gotta tame the Russians. we got to tame the Russians. The Russians are in Ukraine. And I'm thinking to myself, here we go. 